In this video, you're gonna learn exactly how to do SEO on a brand new website without any domain authority or without any past experience on how to do it. If you're setting up a brand new website, this video is for you. Now, I recently did this with one of our clients' websites, a power washing website, and generally speaking, keywords take a few months or even a few years to even start showing up in the search results, and the way we set this website up, which is the way we're gonna teach you how to set it up, the keywords started appearing relatively quickly inside of the search results. So what you're gonna get out of this video are my best tips on exactly how to set up that website so you can go out there and start setting up your own brand new website and be confident that it's gonna rank on the Google search results and that you're doing the right thing. So without further ado, let's get into the first step, which is picking the right domain name. So to give you some general guidelines of choosing a good domain name for your business, probably the best thing, or your new website, probably the best thing to do is consider what your goal is. If you want a website specifically for lead generation, you're gonna wanna pick a keyword domain that has your phrase inside of that domain. If you're gonna wanna create a branded website, which is all about your brand and your name, you're gonna wanna use your branded keyword phrase in your actual domain name. And so to do this, consider Google's EMD algorithm, which is exact match domain. They still work very well if you're creating a website just for lead generation, but consider that shorter names often perform better in the search results, and especially if you're going for something that's very branded. For example, Apple is not applelaptopcompany.com, they just use Apple, and since they're branded, they rank higher in the search results. But if that's not an option for you, you've really got to start considering keyword research. We use a tool called SEMrush, and we're going to show you right now exactly how to find some of the keywords that you should include in your domain, because you're going to want to pick the right keyword depending on how many people are searching for that keyword. So without further ado, let's get into SEMrush and show you exactly how to compile some of these great ideas. Okay, everyone. So now we are inside of SEMrush, and the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to, inside of our dashboard, visit the keyword overview tool that SEMrush offers. And this is a really good tool because you can actually enter several keywords separated by commas if you want to see several different types of phrases that they're going to offer you. So for this example, we're working with a pressure washing website. So I'm going to click pressure washing and then I'm going to go ahead and click analyze. And what this is going to do is it's going to show me a lot of data on who types in pressure washing and actually what people are searching when they do type it in so you can best determine your domain. Um, so for this example too, there's also courses that SEM Rush teaches as well, which I highly recommend you go through if you want to really take this seriously. Educating yourself always helps. And you can see that if you click on the actual keyword variations report, SEM Rush will tell you every single keyword phrase that people type in, how much it gets typed in, the difficulty to rank that keyword, the cost per click, the competition of that keyword, and how many SERP results, search features they have. And ultimately, you're going to look for the keyword phrases that have the most search results possible. So as you can see, Pressure Washer clearly has the most search results possible, but you've really got to be careful here because if somebody's looking at Pressure Washer, they may be looking up to buy a pressure washing machine rather than getting somebody to pressure wash their home. So doing your research, you could come through here and you could find several different keywords that people are typing in. And so you can start to really see that pressure washing near me seems to be what's the most accurate keyword phrase here with 18,000 monthly searches, um, a decent keyword difficulty, a high cost per click, meaning it's a very good intent keyword phrases for Google advertisers. And there's local snippets, which means people are, this is showing up inside of the local results. It's important to use this SERP features function right here to determine your website keywords based on your goals. If this is a local website, you should go for keywords that have the local map section next to it because that means it's a local intent keyword phrase. So if I search pressure washing near me in my area, I'm going to get local search results and local map results, meaning local businesses are advertising as well as the Google Maps and as well as the organic section. This is a good way of determining if you should pick this keyword phrase because usually if your goal is to get local, you'll want to show up inside of the Google Maps and it's pretty important that your domain reflects that. Um, as an example, this is a website called Sparkle Pressure Washer LLC and you can see that their domain is actually called Sparkle Pressure Wash. So they've used the combination of their brand as well as the keywords that they want to show up for inside of their URL. Now that you've done some of that keyword research and you know which phrases are important to your business, we've got to check to see if it is registered on the web. 
you can go to a website like Google Domains or GoDaddy to simply type it in and search to see if it's available. The reason why I use GoDaddy and Google Domains is because it is extremely safe. And when I say safe, I mean Google and GoDaddy are not gonna go anywhere, they're billion dollar companies, so your domain is always gonna be safe with them. As an agency, we work with a lot of people that try to take our clients' domains away from their actual GoDaddy and Google accounts. And if you're if you're if you're a customer of an agency, don't let agencies do that. Generally speaking, it's best if you just have it in your own Google domains or your own GoDaddy account because you truly own it at that point. And at the last step, if you really have difficulty deciding what the domain name is going to be, you can simply hold a contest or some type of survey uh, with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues, with your business professionals, or you can join a Facebook group like Chase Reiner's SEO group and simply post in there. And I'm sure several people will give you their opinions as to why you should pick the best one, and you can do a poll and then ultimately decide from there. But with that. That being said, let's move on to the next step. Search engine bots need to crawl your website and that's why I recommend making a page rich website. Now, what exactly does that mean? Basically what that means is you wanna create a website that is so descriptive, so informative, so rich in content, formatted the right way that I'm gonna show you how to plan out inside of this video that answers all of your customers' questions and gets searched for for any potential keyword phrase. To do this, you're gonna want to make what's called a website framework skeleton or what we call it a website sitemap that addresses the pages that you're gonna wanna build on that website. Website sitemaps generally contain five core pages, the home page, the service page, the about page, the contact page, and if you're gonna be doing consistent content marketing, the blog page. Each page should be designed to its own formality and should serve the purpose of the user as Google's algorithm is going more towards user experience. Okay, everyone, so this is an example of what a website sitemap should look like if you're doing the strategies we're telling you inside of this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to um, our actual client's uh, pressure washing website. This is our client's website, um, maintain it all, the one I was mentioning before. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the sitemap and kind of determine some of the things that we should add. Now, you can see how this is a template that we've already made um, for specific pressure washing type sites. But if you wanted to, you can go into SEM Rush and start to find the keywords that are, that are important to your actual website sitemap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at these, some of these keywords and see if any of them are missing from the sitemap and add them as we go on. As you can see, we've already done some work here in adding the homepage which is just going to be the domain.com, the about page, which would just be uh, domain.com slash about, uh, the team page, residential page. So this pressure washing company, as an example, only wants to do pre residential. And then not only just creating a page for residential, but making sure that we identify what parts of residential that they do. And this is so important because if somebody types in apartment pressure wash, this page is gonna be the one that shows up inside of the Google search results. I was explaining this to a client today when we typed in Manchester CT uh, dental implants, and you know why this is why page depth is, depth is so important. You can see that our client Signature Smiles is ranking number one for the Google Ads, but we want them to be at the top for the dental implants page, and you can see how it's ranking that actual dental implants page. So it's critical that you actually add page depth to, and and use a sitemap to your strategy. So for this website as an example, we still have some somewhere to go. Although we have a soft washing page, we have a power washing page, they're two completely different pages, we still need to get to work on some of the other places that they do the power washing for, and we have the URL structure that we're gonna use to follow this. Generally speaking, your URL structure should follow something very similar to this, to where it uses your initial domain, the, 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 the category that it's in, in this case scenario, it's in residential, and then the keyword phrase that you're targeting. So when you go to the Google search engines and you type in something like Manchester CT, single tooth replacement and that's the page that's going to show up tooth replacement dentist in manchester and we just have so many more opportunities to actually rank keyword phrases inside of google search now this is why SEM rush is nice for this because i can go in here and already see i can i should be adding a commercial section to this actual template and the reason why i should be doing that is because if i'm adding this i should be able to um i should be able to uh, you know, add, add certain things to this right here. And unfortunately, this is a view only Google Sheet, so I can't edit it. But if I could, I would add commercial in there if they do that, because that gets searched 260 times. P pressure, pressure wash repair, another 260. Prices, another 260. Cost, another 210. Uh, town, another 210. Near me, 170. Concrete, 140. 
That means by just adding a concrete section to this actual dropdown, we're gonna be able to add 140 more potential searches to our clients' websites or your website if you're building your own. And that's what you wanna do. That's the goal with creating page depth because now that you've done this, you can truly determine your SEO content from your actual sitemap. Now that you've laid out your website sitemap, you can kind of determine how much content is gonna be needed from there. And that's where you can decide what content, what text, and what pictures and information that you're gonna to need to plan out your brand new website with SEO in mind. And now you're doing so great and you're following along. And now we're gonna talk about the website builder that you're gonna to use to take your skeleton and put it into fruition. Now there's a lot of different website builders that you can use. Some of the most popular include WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, a lot of these different website builders that have already been around for such a long time, but that's not our recommendation. If you're looking for a website builder that is, has a lot of usability and you can quickly produce websites at scale and quickly produce, produce pages at scale, you're going to want to use a little known platform called Duda. And while I say it's a little known, it has millions of websites that it's managing. It's a very popular platform. Generally, retail don't know about it. Mostly agencies know about it. But I'm telling you because in this video, I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to actually make these pages come to life inside of the Duda editor. So with that being said, let's hop into the Duda editor and see exactly what it's about with this power washing website as an example. So this is the platform that I was talking about. It's called Duda and it's pretty easy to use and you can really start with a free trial to get started to test out a website. But for this example, I'm just going to show you exactly how we would dive in and get this started. So the inside of Duda, when you start making a website, there's several different templates that you can choose from. And these templates are all gonna be very helpful to you because you're going to be basically making a new website. So if we're making a power washing website using this sitemap that we're building, generally speaking, we're gonna to wanna to use the new one that they actually just released called Renovation and Construction. And so with that being said, I can build the website and I can name it Power Washing Example. And what's cool about this is if I click on Start Building, it's actually gonna start creating the new website for me. And then I'm gonna be able to use a visual editor in the back end to actually edit the website. So you can see that the website is built pretty much very strong already. And all we have to do is make some very small changes to actually make it look nice. Now, I'm gonna keep this really a big disclosure here. Our websites at the Velomark, these ones here, unfortunately, the ones that you see on our companies, they're, none of them are templates. So none of these are actually templates that you can pick inside of the Duda store but you can actually use a lot of these templates to get things done the right way. Um, so you can see that this the work is kind of already done here in terms of the different types of pages that they have. But if we wanna make it like our sitemap, we're gonna want we're gonna to need to make these pages a little bit different. And so here's what we're gonna do. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna really clear out the guts and see um, what's going on here. So the first thing that you should know about Duda is the navigation on the top you, there's an editor for mobile version and then there's an editor for desktop version. Both are very nice. The left side, you can see that you can edit the design of the website here. You can edit the pages of the website here. You can use the different widgets of the website here and you can access the blog here, any settings of the website here. We're gonna start with the actual pages of this website. So you can see that there's a lot of different pages that are on this website. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and just rename these pages because that's not what we're doing. So I'm gonna name this one residential. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of these pages, as you can see how I just dragged that under there, under the residential tab. So we can categorize this content very similar to what's laid out inside of the website sitemap. And then there is an about page, a contact page, and then some anchors, which is that basically if you click something, they'll go to those anchors. So with that being said, let's take a look at the home page and start there. One important thing to note is if you're gonna be doing SEO on a Duda website, you can click the gear here and you can actually click on SEO. And then from here, you can set the page as no index, which would basically block search engines from crawling this page. This would mean if somebody were to type your URL into their Google search or their Bing search or wherever, it wouldn't show. And you can set the page title. So for this example, I'm gonna go ahead and name it Power Washing uh, Companies or Company. And then I'm gonna do Southington, Connecticut because that's where we're located. And although this video is not about writing great page titles and great page descriptions, you should have a good understanding of what to put inside of here. Generally speaking, just to quick, give you a quick heads up, you should have your keyword inside of here and your location. And the meta description should be the same thing, either your keyword and your location combined. So I would say something like 
Ruan's power wa washing company is the best priced soft washers in Southington, right? This is this is not great. I wouldn't say that this is a gr the best title tech to put in here, but for times purposes, that's what we're going to do. And so you can see that the keyword is mentioned inside of here, and we also added a variation, soft wash, and then Southington, Connecticut. We found this to be very effective because if you look at this first location page we've made, and what a location page is, I'm sure you guys know, but a location page is basically a, town, a page targeting a town. When you type in Collegeville, PA, and you type that inside of the Google search results, and you type in soft washing, um, it actually shows up. And that's exactly what we want to do with our brand new domain because this is an absolute brand new domain. So you can see it's actually ranking third organic there. So with that being said, now that the page description is all set, you can now start designing the home page. So th the builder is very dynamic, meaning you can basically click on anything and change it. So as an example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use some of the basic text con or the basic contents from this website here. So I, I, I strongly don't recommend I'm only doing this because this is our client. So, um, you know, I would strongly never recommend taking anything from an existing website. But because it's our client, we can take pretty much all of this stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this right here, this header one to the actual keyword. And you can see black should never go over black. So we can make that white. And so now we have the keywords that we're targeting inside of our H1 tag. And for basic on-page SEO, this, this video is not about on-page SEO, but it is about just setting up the website the right way and including the keyword inside of your H1 tag is very important. Then some of the text right here that I'm going to take, I'm just going to put this text in this section right here. And now that that text is there, we're going to do some small changes to the actual header of this actual site. So you can see that when I hover into the header section, there's actually an orange header tag that says right here. So that's to let you know that you're editing a, pa a section of the site that's going to be on every single page of the website. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to make this row right here black. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm going to change the logo here with the copy of the logo that the client has provided us with. So with Duda, you can upload all your media files pretty easily, very similar to other editors. And I'll upload my logos and, and my contents inside of here. And then once those images are uploaded, I'll replace them on the actual website and then we'll be good to go. One thing that I really like about Duda is it compresses the images to make them smaller so they're faster. Um, so now I can choose this logo and you can see how good this logo actually looks here already. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger like that. And now you can see that that logo looks great. And this menu doesn't look great because it's black still with black text. So you can click on this menu and instead of having it be black, you can design and actually change the navigation to make it white. So you can actually make the link text here all white. And so using this is going to take a little bit of uh, uh, learning and, and, and Duda has some great universities that you can actually do. But you can see that this is this site is already coming along pretty well. And if I move this here, I can actually make this logo a little bigger if I wanted to, or I can make it smaller, but I recommend making the logo a decent size just like that. And over here, you can make this number phone number section bigger. And to do this, you can either edit the phone number directly here. So in this case scenario, we would actually take the phone number of our client, which is right here, and we would add it inside of here. And you can change that right there in this little phone number widget that they have. And then that would update to that. But you can also make it bigger by actually editing the design and making the font bigger. So that phone number is more of a display on that actual website there. You can see that. Now, another thing that's really cool about Duda is you can actually go into uh, um, content and inside of business info, you can add your business name. So let's say this business name is maintain it all. You can add the location, Eagle View, PA. This is the phone number, right? And you can actually label this phone number, the main phone number. You can add an email inside of here. So main email, and I'm just going to put info at maintainitall.com. And then you can also preset your social media links and your business hours and your business address. What that's going to do is anytime that you use a widget inside of the Duda website builder, it's going to automatically populate all of that information. So for this example, I'm going to put in the business address there. So if I ever use a maps uh, widget, it's going to have that automatically populated business hours. That's fine. I'm just going to do that. And then you can also see that you can change the business text if you want to have that. 
you can add your images, etc. And so that, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and change this image here back to working on the site to this nice picture that we took for the client when we visited them a long time ago, probably not that long ago. Um, this little green thing right here. So this is an actual uh, uh, graphic. So, I mean, you can keep that if green is within your customer's branding uh, guidelines, <clears throat> but you can see how this is starting to come across, right? So, you know, instead of these being called residential bathroom, et cetera, we're going to want to call them what our site map calls them. So houses is one of them. Then we're going to do uh, apartments. Apartments aren't really a good target for this type of business, but that's okay. Alrighty. So now you can see that we've changed that. And if you've noticed that these highlight in, in green, if that's not within your branded guidelines, which means the colors that you're going to be using for your branding, on any Duda element, you can right click and simply hit on edit design. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and just basically change the link text on hover. So right now the link text is white, which is fine because over gray, it should be white, but on hover, it should be a different color. So for this link text, we're going to go ahead and do hover. And now when you hover over this text, you can see it's the branded colors and it gets to the branded guidelines which is nice for several reasons, because that's gonna make it so uh, people can hover over that better. Now, one thing that also you should probably know as well is this, this actual uh, content here, um, this navigation that you're seeing right here is custom and it's not the site's pages. If it's the site's pages, it's gonna show every page that's actually on your website unless you do the hidden feature inside of Duda's platform. So what you can do is, is you can hide pages. So in our work, I can go ahead and click on hide slash show and navigation, and that's gonna be able to uh, hide that inside of the navigation there. And so with that being said, let's go to scroll. And now we have this about us section. Um, you know, already that's, yeah, that's important. You need an about us section already if you're gonna be making a website. So very similar, you know, we have some of the text here that we've already written for our clients for the about us section. And you can just go ahead and copy and paste that in there. And you can see one problem that I'm already seeing is, this is why it's important that you uh, set your branded guidelines uh, early because the, the green here shouldn't be that way. So in the design, you can change global settings as they call it. And you can actually change the link to be orange or the customer's branded color and it will all change into orange. You could do the same with the H tags, with the H2 tags, with the H3 tags, with H4 tags. So when we get a client, generally speaking, this is the first thing that we'll take care of is the actual branded guidelines because then when we start making the site, it gets a lot easier. You could do the same with buttons, so you can change the buttons to actually be those different colors as well. Uh, images, backgrounds, etc. You can change the site layouts to, to dictate where the menus go. Um, and we've built a lot of custom widgets to have our make our jobs easier inside of the platform, but this is a brand new account. This is not nothing special, so you can actually do the same thing that I'm building here. Now, you may have noticed that the logo actually changed to re-room as I scrolled, and that's not good. So what we want to do is, in the header section, when you click here, you can actually click edit design. And what you can do is, is you can actually go in and click on shrinking header. And you can have something that changes logo on scroll and just make sure it's the white one. So when you scroll, the white one stays there or you can just have the header completely go away on scroll if you would like. So now that's that said, you have a nice little about us here and this will actually go to the about us page. Um, then let's take a look at this information here. You know, I can go ahead and take this picture and I can replace this picture with work that they've done. And luckily, we take pictures for our clients. If you don't have pictures for your business or your client's business, I highly recommend you use some type of photography to get it because it's gonna make the site look a lot better. So for this case scenario, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and upload a lot of different pictures that our clients already done. So this is a folder with a few images that they have and I'm gonna go ahead and upload these images into the actual editor. Now, if we were working with a client in a real situation here, we would have had these pictures already uploaded into the, into the system so we can already use them. So for this example, I'm gonna go ahead and use this awesome one that they have uh, of the actual concrete here. And so now that you can see how beautiful that looks and you can change these little green bars to match your branding by changing the color of them. This is what I love about this platform. Everything is very searchable. Everything is very clickable. Everything is very usable. It's not proprietary, meaning agencies don't own this platform, so their customers can use them freely as well. Our customers do. And you can see right here that you can actually put in the information inside of here. Maintain it all has about 10 years of, or actually probably 20 years. They have, um, I don't know, zero, oh, that, they have that. They definitely have you know thousands 
of completed projects and through they have one office in pa um so with that being said now you can continue your scroll and i will say the thing i like about this template is this little background graphic that they have it looks nice with the image over it and that's advanced photoshop stuff that i can't talk about in this video because i'm not a designer as i scroll you can see the different types of services that they have this is what's called a widget and this is a photo gallery widget so you would just have to change this information and to do that you can go ahead and put um, houses here and you can just put a picture of a house so the good thing about Duda's image library is you can actually search using um, most most tools that actually offer uh, website pictures like uh, unsplash and you can see how that's changed this one's not going to be bathrooms it's going to be apartments and then I can change this image and I can search apartment inside of here and it's going to show me actual apartments and then the third one is going to say um, uh, oops I'm sorry about that this one should say residential. Actually, no, that's fine. This can say houses, and then this one can say apartments. That's fine. So this one right here, the outdoors is going to say roofs, and I'm gonna change this to a picture of a roof. And you get the idea here. You're basically just making everything match up if you want to, right? So now you have apartments, you have this. And what's cool about these is they're already linking, so you don't have to do a lot of work. Um, so then inside of here, there is, you can change the picture once again. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and change this picture to, let's say, um, this one right here because it's longer. You want to make sure you, you consider how long the image should actually be. I wonder if there's one that's longer. You can see that one's not long enough. This one was really good. That one works very well. And so how it works is you can actually take in the, the steps here. Send a request. Um, I'm going to say, because there's really no measurements, approve budget, start project, finish on schedule, and you can change all of the accordion stuff inside of here. And once again, this is just a widget. You can see right here that it says accordion, which means it's a widget. Duda preloaded comes with dozens of widgets on the left side here. But if you click this button, it's going to give you all of the different types of widgets that you can use. And you can go ahead and just pick from these. And we've built custom ones for our agency to make our jobs a lot easier. You would, but Duda comes with a lot of great widgets to start with. And then you have our latest projects. So you can upload the client's latest projects inside of here. I'm not going to do that. Uh, testimonials, you can upload testimonials. I'm not going to do that. Partners, you can keep this. This is basically who they work with. And then some type of call to action at the footer section. And you can see that that's already made. So now we have a pretty nice website already made. And it took me about 10 minutes to make this website um, on here. Now, keep in mind, this is something that has a lot of work to do because all of these pages like residential, this page needs pictures, text, it needs service content text, like all of this needs text right here. And we're gonna show you exactly how to get that text because if you have pages with the exact same text on it, you're gonna get hit with Google's duplicate content penalty and those pages aren't gonna show up in the search results as I'm showing you inside of here. So this page specifically has all of the text information that this page needs and all of this text is completely unique. So this text right here is unique, the H is unique, this text is unique, the bullet points are unique, this text is unique, etc. And this one, it's not unique, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I get the content to do that. There you have it. You should know now how to build that website inside of Duda very effectively using one of the pre-built templates that they offer. But we're not done now. SEO is an ongoing effort, and now we're gonna talk about how to create a content plan and a content calendar using my favorite tool, Verblio. Pretty cool, right? The Duda editor is by far the best for these different types of local websites. But now, how are we gonna get the content? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about right now to where you don't even have to write the content. Now, if you have the budget, ordering content can be extremely effective for several reasons. Number one, if you're not an expert in the field, you should order the content from people that know what they're talking about. Number two, if you've completed your core pages, your homepage, your service page, your about page, your contact page, all of your textual content for your other pages should have a heavy SEO approach. To do this, I'm gonna bring you through a few steps on ordering content using a platform called Verblio. But before we get there, I really quickly wanted to address your content should frequently change on a month to month basis. The more you update your website, the more Google's gonna take the time 
to crawl your website and register your pages faster than they would register your competitors' pages. Since Google took away the manual indexing inside of Google Search Console, aka Webmaster Tools, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a content calendar so Google frequently visits your website and crawls your website. This is why it's a highly recommended that you use SEMrush's keyword magic tool, and that tool is gonna show you exactly how to find related keywords, frequently asked keywords, and other phrases that you can have to write about. So the keyword magic tool is very similar to the keyword overview tool, except this provides you with keywords that will make you have the most profitable SEO or PPC campaigns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter home power washing into this actual keyword phrase. And I'm going to make sure that the place I'm searching in is the United States. And once I click search inside of the keyword magic tool for SEMrush, I'm going to see all of the different types of keywords that um, are being searched inside of this actual uh, breakdown here. Now, what I really like about this is I can go over to questions and I can quickly find all of the questions that people are asking um, about power washing. Now, you can see a lot of these keywords are automatically going to be disqualified because we, we really don't want to actually you know rank these keywords. Um, how to power wash your home generally has a do it yourself. And so we're going to look at for some of the different types of keywords that people are actually doing. So this might be a good one. What is a good power washer for home use? Um, although that may be towards the rental of power washing market, this is also good for homeowners that want people to, that want a contractor to use a specific one. Um, you can talk about on your website why it's a bad idea to rent instead of just hiring somebody professionally. How to power wash the log home. Uh, this is good to target log homes if that's what you're into. Um, how to power wash. Can you rent a power washer? Once again, a lot of the content is going to come down to renting different keyword phrases. Now, this is another really nice thing about keyword research is that it tells you what people can, what people are typing in. So you can see that can, a lot of people want to know if they can power wash a home, how much it costs to power wash a home, if they can rent a power wash a home, how to use a power washer, what the best ones are, can they do mobile, what's good, and then these are kind of the irrelevant ones that really just come down to uh, random in, inside of there. With this data, it should allow you to structure your content on your website to target the keywords that would make the most sense for you. So for example, I would write something like, can you power wash a log home? And then I would introduce soft washing and soft washing wouldn't break the wood for that home. And this is just an example of how you can do that. You can talk about price. How much does power washing cost in PA? And then you can create an article about that and average those things and quickly rank on the Google search results for that. Why, power, why renting a power wash is a bad idea, right? You may want to talk about why renting is a bad idea because this right here shows that there's a lot of different people searching for rent. How to use a power wash or more specifically, how our company uses a power wash. You want to use this keyword magic tool to create your list of keywords you want to target and make articles around those keywords to put on your website to rank and then get into a backlinking strategy, which we'll talk about in another video. But ultimately, this is a great start for you to start getting some content. So to get on a content calendar after looking at these keywords in Keyword Magic Tool, I'm gonna show you exactly how we do this with Verblio with our existing clients. And if we are not lawyers, we're not chiropractors, we're not dentists, unfortunately, we shouldn't be writing about it. We're gonna pay the experts at Verblio that's gonna match you with one writer that's gonna handle all your content needs. So let me show you a back end of our Verblio account and I'll kind of show you how we plan out a content calendar for a client at Developmark. Alrighty, so before we can even use Verblio, we've really gotta determine from that keyword magic tool which keywords we're gonna target. So what you're looking at right now is an example content calendar for one of our great clients, Ray's Automotive. And basically what we have here is all of the titles of the different blogs we're gonna be posting. So you can see that this what may have been something that was used a lot when we did our research, types of damage, benefits of using insurance, reputable shop, industry certifications, skilled appraiser, what happens to your vehicle when you ask a shop to save off money, different types of keyword phrases that our SEOs thought were important when we did our research. Now, when we go into Verblio, which is the tool that I'm recommending for you to order content from for websites specifically, you probably are wondering what their pricing is. And so Verblio has a really intuitive pricing structure on their website that allows you to actually calculate your own plan. So what happens is, I like how they did, welcome to our TI-82. 
Um, what you can do here is you can basically build a monthly plan. So for this example, let's say we wanted 300 words of text and four articles on a monthly basis. Our total would be $139 per month for this actual articles to be delivered to us. They also add additional services and these services include they will optimize it um, and they will even upload to your website if they want to do that. So for the optimize for $20 per article, they'll actually upload it to your actual website, making your price $219. Personally, I go ahead and just do basic. And basic's going to put you at basically the price that was initially there. Um, and you can save uh, $279 by actually going annually with this. And you can start your subscription plan and get this going. Now, so why is, why is this incredible, right? Why Verblio over any other content tool out there that offers so many different content tools? Well, first and foremost, we've tested pretty much every single content tool you can ever think of. And with Verblio, we're able to create accounts for our clients, but also we're able to basically uh, have really good white label options. So just so you get an example, this is how much money we spend on Verblio on a monthly basis. I mean, it's a lot. And what I'll tell you is we don't mind spending the money because the service works very well. And here's exactly how it works. So let's say that we had Bennett Plastics, which is one of our other clients. So we have four different articles that, are, that the Verblio writers have written. Benefits of using bio-derived plastics, right? Keyword, bio-derived plastics. Three surprising facts, facts about plastic components, etc. And so what happens is we can actually click on white label here and we can actually go ahead and click hidden from client and we can actually see this and send it to the client and they can approve it. If you're working with clients, this is gonna be probably the most effective thing that you do. Because if you go into the white label section here, you can actually go to, let's say, Bennett Plastics and you can click here, and then on this link, it's going to have the article, you can see the article here, and the client can read with your logo set up on it, and they can click the screen check mark to make tell you that it's a good article. The other thing that you can do that, that I really like about Verblio is, if you go back to the actual article, and you read it, you can actually go ahead and decline this article or request edits. Generally speaking, we favorite the writers that we see doing well and we never decline them unless they're actually really bad. And because the more you keep declining, the more the algorithm is gonna kind of work against you because you wanna make sure that you, you get writers that are good and we haven't really found writers that we have to decline for. Simply maybe we have to do some edits, but that's the beauty of the white label. The client will actually give feedback inside of here and write their comments on each and every single one of the articles, completely taking this off of your process. If you're an agency, you can use a freelancer to take care of this for you, this entire process. If you are a business owner, this is gonna be good because then you can leave direct business uh, 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 feedback directly on here. So with Verblio, generally speaking, with our clients, let's say, if they're on a blogging plan that's four blogs per month or whatever that blogging cost is per month, um, they get the research, they get the content, they get the publishing, and uh, we, we pay 139 for the written text, but then we also do all of this other stuff inside of here that's not included inside of here because if we did Verblio Complete, which is what Developmark does for our clients, this would cost 399, 400 bucks a month. You can probably get away with basic if you're just gonna be doing it yourself, but ultimately, this is the place that I recommend you using. And the reason for that is we've seen the text quality just become so nice. So when you go to a site like Ray's Auto Inc., which is our client's website, you know, you can see that there's a lot of information on this website and that's because we're practicing what we preach. So if you go on this website and you go to the blog section, everything inside of this blog section was written by Verblio and our, and our in-house writers as well, some of them, but most of them was written by Verblio and all of the text content is accurate and the client has approved them and they are exactly what they wanna see on their website. So it's one of those things where for us, yeah, it's a little more pricey because yes, you can go on places like fiverr.com and buy an article for $12, $15, $12, $10, but what you're gonna get back is nothing close to what Verblio is gonna give you because they really pride themselves on making sure that it is written effectively. So now we're gonna talk about prioritizing your on-page SEO content. On-page SEO is critical because now that you have textual content to add to your website, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that each of your pages target just one keyword phrase. And to do that, I'm gonna show you some very basic on-page SEO tips that should get the job done relatively quickly. Now you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that all of your content is internally linked inside of your pages. The reason for this is because Google enjoys websites that have a better page experience, but also sites with higher 
average session durations. To increase your average session duration, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that users are navigating throughout your website. To accomplish this, we use something called internal linking to relevant pages on our existing website to get the job done. There's also one last tip I wanna give you before we jump into the tutorial section of this part is you put your most valuable information of the page at the top of your page. Google reads your page from top to bottom, which means if you wanna get featured in the big snippets that Google has been promoting, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your information is valuable, but it's also found at the beginning of the page. I'm gonna show you how to accomplish this, and I'm also going to show you how to optimize for on-page SEO with an example article that we've recently ordered from Verblio. So let's get into the tutorial section, and then we'll wrap up this video by talking about conversion tracking, Google Analytics, and next steps to make sure your website ranks high as a brand new website using SEO. Okay, everyone, so as you can see, uh, for a keyword search of dental implants cost Manchester CT, you can actually see that one of our clients, Signature Smile CT, has the featured snippet. And the featured snippet is just basically a box that actually identifies the information and delivers it very quickly. Now, the importance of doing this is because this page is targeting the cost of dental implants in that location. And so Google's rewarding this phrase with an actual search snippet. Now, to do this, Let's go into the actual editor and then go in and see how I've got that set up so you can kind of understand how to get these similar results with your own website. So this is, we're inside of the editor and what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna go to the cost page. So this is that page that's ranking well inside of the Google search results. And I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this page so you can see that the result is very similar. Now you can also see that Google is highlighting the text inside of here uh, in orange or in yellow I should say as if it was a piece of paper kind of just talking about how this is the featured result because it is very accurate and it's very very informative so you can see how that text is to kind of to the top and it, it definitely talks about the cost very very nicely formatted inside of this page so inside of the editor what you want to do is, is you want to take your text content and you want to start planning out your on-page SEO now the first thing that you should check is and if you ever want to analyze a page if you're using Google Chrome you can right click and click on a page source. And by doing this, you can search title. And so inside of that title, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the keyword is inside of what they call a title tag, which is a very basic word of just basically saying what the page is about. Your keywords should be inside of the title tag for the page that you're writing the content in. Your keywords should also be inside of the actual, um, it's meta description of that page. And remember, to edit that meta description, all you have to do is head over to Pages, navigate to the page that you wanna edit, tap the SEO button, and you can change the title tag, you can change the meta description, and you can also change the URL path. Your inside of your URL path should also be the keywords that you've identified in your sitemap before you even started working on the website. So with that being said, once you set these, then you can go in and start placing your content. Your content should include the keyword inside of an H1 or H2 tag. You should also have rich media on the page to supplement the user's experience. And you should have friendly text that you should have ordered from Verblio or another website that allows you to get content. Now you can also see inside of this page, we're internally linking a lot of that content because we want people to navigate throughout the website. Somebody that lands on this page may not know who this is and internally linking this information is ultimately gonna help them navigate through the website and get more page experience and more visitors. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna show you Google Analytics. So inside of Google Analytics, you can see that once we publish this website using the strategies that we're teaching you inside of this video, the sessions went up and they're gradually increasing on a day-to-day -day basis. And compared to the last 180 days on this blue chart here, the sessions have drastically decreased 100% or so. And the reason for this is because we've implemented this strategy on a lot of the different pages on the website to actually submit that and actually rank for these different types of keywords. So if somebody were to do something very similar, if they were to go to Google and they were to type in dental implants versus dentures inside of that area, you're gonna, be, you're gonna see that there's also probably a featured snippet ranking for that page because that page we wrote a unique content about it. So you can see that that page is ranking here as well. Now you may be wondering, do people actually search this stuff? And the answer is they do. And the less people that search it, it oftentimes means the easier to rank that keyword phrase. But if one patient comes from this website for our client, for example, they make a significant amount of money just because of that page that we've set up when we were setting up their website. Google Analytics is gonna show you a lot of this data that you should have set up the moment you set up your website. And to do so, it's very easy. Inside of the dashboard in Duda, 
you can actually visit the settings section and place in your Google Analytics ID inside of the actual account information to start tracking visitors through Google Analytics. This is really important to do because it's gonna give you key data as to what you should be doing to actually track these visitors, and it's gonna give you reports on how well they're doing on a month-to-month -month basis. It's also gonna show you the pages that people visit the most inside of those days. So you can see last seven days, the implants page seems to be the page with the most value. And this is gonna give you really, really key details in terms of how the page is performing, as well as how many th different sessions people are having. So as you can see, shortly after the site's launch, bounce rate decreased a little bit, session duration is, is decreasing only because we're running Google Ads to the site, and usually those sessions are short. But you can determine a lot of this stuff inside of Google Analytics. Another highly recommended tool to add to your website for brand new SEO is Google Search Console. This website is going to give you a lot of data in terms of SEO reporting specifically. Analytics can give you a lot of the data overall, and you can filter this data to just see organic results, but Google Search Console is going to give you a lot of just the specific SEO results. Things like if your pages have good coverage, and if there's any pages with errors, and things like actually looking at enhancements. You can see that we don't have any enhancements that we have to do because we follow the steps that we showed you inside of this video. One critical thing that you're going to want to do is submit a website sitemap to Google Search Console the moment you publish your website on your domain. Doing so is going to allow Google to start crawling your URLs on almost a monthly basis or a daily basis, depending on how much you publish, giving your pages more visibility inside of the Google Search Engine. If you're an agency like myself, you may want to consider using a tool like Splashdash that will allow you to actually put in your clients inside of this tool and integrate all of their data inside of one beautiful dashboard that you can actually send to them on a monthly basis so they can quickly see and log in and see all of the important metrics that you want to show them on a monthly basis, weekly basis, or any of those basis. For example, if a client wanted to change, if a client wanted to see how their performance was over the last year, they can tap that just by logging in and they'll be able to see their analytics over a year instead of just looking at analytics for the last month or so. This is a really good way of actually streamlining your reporting for your clients if you're doing the agency model, if you're doing website design and SEO, and this is ultimately gonna to lead to higher retention rates. So if you have these two basic tools set up, Google Analytics, Google Search Console, and any other tracking and conversion tool, you should be implementing that data inside of Splashdash to actually get that data very nicely and very cleanly reported to your client. And there you guys have it. Those are some of the basic steps that you can do to get your local website ranking in the search results relatively fast. Now, for me, I like to stay up to date with things as much as possible. And staying up to date can really, really make the difference in keeping cutting edge strategies happening for your website. There's a few ways to do that. My favorite way is following the SEM Rush blog. They always write some really good content from thought leadership inside of that blog that actually talks about SEO. My second favorite is Search Engine Journal. I like reading the Search Engine Journal because generally it always has great SEO updates that you can follow. And my third best practice is setting up a Google alert for the keyword SEO and search engine optimization so you can actually get emailed every time something happens and is in the news about SEO. And generally when Google releases an update, you're gonna be the first one to know and you're gonna to have to make sure that you're implementing it on your own site. If you have an agency that's doing your work right now, you can make sure they're implementing it on your site. Or if you are an agency, you can make sure that you're doing it for your clients. So with that being said, leave some comments down below. Let me know any questions that you may have about this video. I'd love to clarify them. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. And I thank you all for watching today's video.